Welcome to Cafe X Machina channel. Sometimes a project begins not with a plan, but with leftover parts. This G A25-370 motor was sitting on my bench. The RPM was unsuitable for its original purpose, but rather than shelving it, I decided to give it a second life. Today, I will show you how one motor inspired a modular mount system and eventually a fully functional tumbler machine for polishing aluminium parts, all for about 25 euros. The first step was straightforward, design a motor mount and bracket. I created a 40 by 40 by 20 mm block with R5 fillets. The 404020-R5 motor mount attaches to a dedicated bracket, and that bracket is then fastened to a 160 by 40 aluminium extrusion. Suddenly, I realized this wasn't just a one-off part. It was the beginning of a modular system. But design on the screen and reality on the printer are two different things. One of the biggest challenges came from tolerances. My bamboo printer slightly undersizes holes. For example, the GA25 motor has a 7mm brass bushing. If I model a 7mm hole in Fusion, it simply will not fit. The solution is to oversized 7.05mm in CAD produces the correct 7mm in the print. It's a small detail, but it makes all the difference. For material, I almost always use PETG. It is strong yet not brittle. Unlike PLA, it does not crack on the first impact. And it can be sanded, which helps when fine-tuning tolerances. Most modules printed perfectly the first time. But the frame came loose during the first print and had to be redone. That is the reality of 3D printing. Sometimes a 22-hour print is wasted. Smaller modular parts, however, can be reprinted in just an hour. Once I had a working mount, I realized its potential. This was not just a bracket, it was a system. And that sparked the next idea, why not build a tumbler, a rotating machine for polishing aluminium parts designed entirely around modular blocks. The design included a lightweight frame, a bearing module, and two custom gears. I chose gears instead of belts simply because I had no pulleys or belts available. Necessity often dictates the solution. The CAD work made it clear how modular thinking could accelerate design iterations. Swap a block instead of reprinting the entire frame. The hardware list remained simple, 8608 bearings, two steel axles, and the 3D printed frame and gears. I forgot to enable the support setting during printing, so some sanding work was required. In a 3D print made without support material, the tops of the openings are imprecise, so I sanded them to the correct size using an aluminium profile and P100 sandpaper. Once all the openings had been sanded to size, I installed the bearings into the 404020 module. The modules proved very precise, most bearings seated by hand, though a few required a clamp. Installing the modules was straightforward. At first, I used a clamp for fitting, but later, once the modules had settled in place, they could be replaced by hand. Fitting the axle took some time. An M8 washer had to be placed between the axle and the sprocket to prevent the sprocket from rubbing against the frame. After installing the axles, I mounted the motor into the module. 
Off to that, we could test run the Tumblr machine prototype. The sprocket on the motor shaft slipped under load, so I designed a new version of the sprocket. Ideally, this should be belt driven, but as I did not have those parts, I continued with sprockets. Relying only on the axles, the pot rotated too slowly and lacked sufficient grip, so I also printed 50mm rollers with every other one yellow made from flexible filament. The idea was to gain more traction as round plastic containers are slippery. I designed the rollers with Tinkercad at the workshop and forgot that if you want an 8mm hole, it needs to be slightly larger, about 8.1mm. As a result, all the rollers were too tight, so I hammered them into place using a piece of pipe. I made the container from a 150mm SUA pipe fitting, which works quite well for this purpose. The seals of the SUA pipe were so tight that the lid could not be closed because air could not escape. So, I drilled a hole and installed an air valve, which allowed the air to be released. Then came the test. I loaded aluminium brake levers and abrasive media, steel balls of 4.5 and 8mm. Honestly, I doubted the G at 25 motor. It is inexpensive, just $6 and not very powerful. But it handled the load surprisingly well. The pots rotated steadily. After a short cycle, the aluminium began to shine. The only question now is longevity. How long will this little motor last under constant load? The next step is already clear. I will build a larger version with a belt drive and the motor concealed inside the frame. The modular system makes this quicker. Printing a new frame takes 22 hours, whereas a single new module takes just one. That is the power of modularity, faster prototyping, less waste, and more room for creativity. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this build, give the video a like and subscribe to Cafe X Machina channel for more makeup projects. Keep experimenting and keep building.